Hi, everyone, and welcome. Today is the Saturday Hucolo webinar with Jim Charles. It is Saturday, the 24th of February, 2018. And in our room, who do you have, Jim? I have Angie, Barbara, and Ray. Okay, and in our room, we have Christine, Ian, and in our Mark. Room, you I hope you guys can hear that. I have Angie, Barbara, and Ray. <laughs> Does everyone okay. hear that? And in our room, we have Christine, Ian, One second. and in our Mark. room, I hope you guys can hear that. <laughs> I, ah, I can't get rid of it. Okay, I've got to stop. I forget to mute it. Oh, okay. Phew. Sorry for that technical difficulty. All right. That was my. That was me watching the chat in the uh, YouTube, and as soon as I started talking, there was just a slight delay. Okay. So we. So in our room, we have Christine, Ian, Jim, of course, Mark, Marlena, Michelle, Salish, Sheer, Stephanie. Typhus and myself, Karen Newman. And we're going to start with the prayer, are we not? Yes. Okay. We'll um, Barbara. <laughs> so sorry for that. Okay. Already ready? Yes. Okay. We're ready. Yatanakia shawata hiaka Nato to Yatakia Natia Nakawata Tuatia Natia Ratu Ratia Takashia. Let the light penetrate through to this realm in a way that it never has before. Let enlightenment be more common than it ever has been before. And let you all rise up to meet the greater portions of your mind, yourself, and your God. Elohim echananu vidvachnu yair panav atla sele. Elohim Elohim tzvaot ashivuna har panecha venishona. Elohim shmat filotai azina la amor pi, nitvot pi ratsana donai venishpatecha la madni. Very good. You you can interpret that. That's Hebrew, isn't it? It's uh, an ancient Hebrew. I took a prayer from the Bible. Oh, tell us what it says. Um, it says, God and the, and the Elohim, give us prayers. Help give us prayers. send your armies to retrieve light so we could rest. And my answer was uh, heard by God. That's the rough translation. Excellent. Yes, beautiful. I love it. Thank you. I, the part about send your arteries to retrieve the light is really beautiful because what they're saying is that you're Sometimes people have to fight for their their rights and their the way they live. But when you're going after, um, there's really no such thing as having a great war to get the light. You just retrieve it from those that have taken it. So I think that that's a really beautiful thing. I love that. You can retrieve your right, light, not by fighting, but just by taking it back. I've, I've experienced that many times. People try to steal your light and you just take it back. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. Very good. Okay, today we have some, um, we have some requests. Uh, we have the request of King Arthur, um, Sarah, the wife of Abraham, Nefertiti and um, Akhenaten, I think that's how you say it, uh, Takur, Anubis, Archangel Michael, or one of the angels, Nivi, um, uh, that's a prophet. I guess, uh, what does that share say that? I don't know what you, what you were typing there. Samuel, Samuel the prophet. Oh, Anubis. it says, Nivi says Samuel the prophet. Oh, who's Nivi? That must be a person. Never mind. Okay, <laughs> Samuel the prophet. <laughs> Nivi is Sheer's brother. <laughs> okay, Nivi, sorry. Okay, Lorcan of the Universal Council and... Uh, that's it, I think. Yeah. Quite a wow, lots of requests today. 
Yeah. Any other requests on your side? Uh, any other requests over here? Insectoid. An insectoid. So, okay. all right. There's many requests today. I have no idea who's coming. I know that Elijah's not coming today. He's taking a week off. But mm -hmm. um, he he is preparing for some other things. So. Can I can I also make a request? This is not a, a being, but it would be maybe represented by a being. But um, the being of sacred sound. Uh, the half whores might take over that thought process. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So they are great high priests and priestesses of toning and sound that, uh, that they use for healing and for uh, changing things. They can change molecular, molecular structures with toning. Um, it's really amazing what they can do with uh, sound. Yes. So. Okay, perfect. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Very good. And let's see who comes. Um, have a wonderful time, everybody. I do have one announcement. I just thought of something. I will be announcing the next Galactic Reiki class uh, because many people have requested it. It will be on a weekend, Saturday and Sunday. I'm not sure the times yet. We're just developing it now. But if you're interested, let me know so that we can... Um, see how many oh and the price is a hundred dollars for six hours it's three hours on saturday and then three hours on sunday but um since a lot of people are interested we'll make the price low so that a lot of people can take it and get that information because it's very valuable just is let me know if you're interested is it the second yes. part it's uh actually the galactic it's going to be all of galactic reiki that for those people that didn't have any of it. So spirals and non-spirals? Oh, yes, it'll be spirals non and non-spirals, correct. There's two parts, spirals and non-spirals. The Both parts will be taught. Spirals on the first day and non-spirals on the second. Very good, all right. All right, whenever you're ready. Uh, let's see who comes. Perfect. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, people, please keep your mute mics muted. This is Sarah. Oh, greetings, Sarah. They will allow me to come first so that I may give my point of view on how things were back then. Perfect. Welcome. Much love to it you. It was a rough life, but it was rewarding, especially when your husband is well-renowned. I had Miss Maidens and those that would help me around but I would like for people to ask questions so that they can get a more well-rounded understanding of what, would, what it was like in the desert areas. We lived a lot in, in areas that were not really very fruitful, if you will. It was a lot of desert area. There was some trees and some bushes, but not a great deal. 
figs would grow there and olives and things of that nature, but not, and there were some berry bushes, but you had to be cautious. But um, please ask some questions so that I may enlighten you as you wish to be enlightened. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Christine, this is Sarah, the wife of Abraham. And Sarah, uh, Christine yes. has a question. Blessed be. Yes. Um, a woman, uh, a professor, a doctor of um, archaeology, I think, had written a story um, saying that she um, had pieced together that you were a um, priestess, a high priestess of the earth, and that many of the stops Abraham made were for you to make um, sacrifices, or not sacrifices, to make blessings and so on and so forth at those areas. Though sacrifices is also correct. Oh. But yes, I was considered a priestess. It wasn't an official title. It was given to me by the people because of who my husband was. And because of the reverence they had for him, they assumed that I had to be of priestess uh, origin, or I had to have that label to just be with him. So therefore, yes, there was times when they came and asked me for what I thought was to be the answer, especially the females. Many of the females did not feel that they were qualified to speak to Abraham, my husband. They felt that they were unworthy. It was taught at that time that females were secondary, but yet when it came to my status, since my husband was a great man of God, my status was elevated so that I could speak to the female population in a way that was similar to the way he spoke to all the people. Now, women would come to me and ask me about sicknesses and illnesses, and I would give them the word of God, of course, as we knew it then, which was very uh, small amounts of understanding from that were passed down from word of mouth, mostly. We did not have the written word as you have today, except for the, the Torah, which is the first five books. And that, and actually we didn't even have all of those because we were in the first five books. So we had Genesis, as we called it, the beginning of the books. And, and we had information about creation and God as a great, powerful and wonderful being, but also a being of great jealousy. No other gods before him, as you would imagine. But um, our view of God was different than it is of your view these days, because you have a more loving and understanding view of him, whereas we were afraid of God and could not um, understand him as a being just as you don't understand him, but but in a far different way. The, the times were much more barbaric, and so we looked at him as creating that barbaric sensibility. Was, um, <clears throat> was one of the things that you addressed um, uh, abuse of um, spouses and um, molestation yes. of children was all of that also addressed? Yes. And there are portions of the Old Testament, as you call it, that say that when a child misbehaved or when a wife misbehaved, they were stoned to death. But that was not the case always. Only in severe cases where extreme abuse was caused were stonings uh, possible because we just didn't stone everyone that disobeyed their mother or father or did something bad. Adultery was a stoning offense, and uh, but the men got away with it more than the women. And it was addressed by the women to me that 
their husbands, they felt, they could not prove it, but they felt that their husbands were being unfaithful and they wanted to know what I would, if I would talk to God about that and bring their husbands back into a faithful relationship, or they would ask uh, why this relationship outside the marriage was happening. So I would get many questions about these things because mostly if a woman were to do that, she would be stoned. There would be no question. And so there was very little unfaithfulness on the women's part. It happened occasionally, but not often. But there was much more uh, evidence that the men were unfaithful at that time. Wow. What was I would what, give them as the advice of love, of the, the advice my husband would give, and that to love them no matter what and give them all the attention that they need and do not refuse them any attention, but to keep them close. But do not be too needy. I saw that if a woman was too needy in our time, she would be rejected. You what must be a strong, a strong woman to survive those times. What happens to women who didn't want to get married? It is there. Well, there were two things. First of all, women that didn't want to get married, their families usually arranged a marriage for them. There were still arranged marriages at this time all throughout the lands. Uh, it seemed that arranged marriages were part of the social acceptance at that time. There were some cultures that did not do that, but occasionally in the Jewish culture back then, a, an arranged marriage would happen, especially during uh, for the wealthier portions of the uh, population. Wealthy men would want their daughters married into a higher class. And they would actually pay for having their daughters marry up into a higher social class. But those women, there were many in the lower classes that did not want to get married. And many remained single if, they, if there uh, was no arranged marriage. What about um, child molestation? Like today, we have a certain age where you shouldn't molest um, a boy or a girl. Um, was it the same there, or was it a looked after? No. Life expectancy was not great in these days, although Abraham and I did live to be older than most of the people. We were... The book says that we were in our 90s when we conceived a child. It would be actually in our 50s. Uh, they had a different concept of time back then. But the thing is, um, children would get married at the age, women would marry at the age of 12 and 13 and 14 back in these times if they were developed enough to marry, they would marry and have children right away. And was it there usually a discrepancy between the age of the um, woman yes. and the... Many times the male would be older, 17, 18, but not much older than that because the males would want to be married and have children right away. Their children were their prosperity, their health, their trade. They, once you have a child and it becomes old enough to work, it is a great blessing to the family. And mm -hmm. so the family would learn that the sooner you have children, the sooner that you can have uh, help and uh, develop pros more prosperity. Now, if the first wife is barren and cannot conceive within the first couple of years, they would take a second and a third and a fourth. And it was not frowned upon at that time to have many wives because they needed children. They needed th those children to help them with their trade, their business and what they wanted to do. 
and with the fields and the cow, the cattle and all these things. And so it was not frowned upon to have more than one wife so that you can, may have the children to uh, move you forward in your prosperity. Yeah, yeah. That I, that I understand. Now, it wasn't actually, uh, many people say, oh, having many wives is very adulterous and things. Of, they didn't look at it as a sexual thing. Uh, having children was something that was necessary. So it was that this was a necessity. It wasn't for a great deal of pleasure that they were taking many wives, although there, of course, it was pleasurable, but it, it was not looked at in that frame of thought. It was looked at in, they, you need to have children and prosperity. And if you had boys, that was a greater blessing than a girl in those times, because of course, the girl was still a blessing because it can help with the household. But a boy was able to work in the fields and do a greater amount of work. But there were times where when a, a girl would grow up and be really strong and, and large, that they would be working in the fields as well and were considered a greater blessing as a female being able to work at, at harder jobs. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Sheer has a question, please. Yes. Hello. How are you? How are you? I am very well. Um, well, today I live in Israel, and I was wondering what is your thoughts about our Orthodox Jews communities where they are basically sending the women to go to learn, to work, to take care of the children, but the men, uh, they need to sit and study Bible all the day, and they don't recruit to the army and doing nothing and don't pay taxes, and the women go and have everything on their shoulders. What do you think about Yes, the times have changed. changed. My opinion of that is this, and I do not want to offend anyone at all, but the very fact that they sit and study and learn about the the Bible, the Torah, and the older uh, some other books is a beautiful thing, but it should not take all of their times. If you devote all your time to one thing, then you become off balanced. You become a different kind of individual, and you are not really responsible for the way that you are living. You the women in the case of this is is sad because they are taking on the responsibility that the men used to take on in my lifetime, in that lifetime. The men were responsible and the women stayed home. They did not study, but they made sure that the grains were ground, that um, there was butter, that there was, yes, there was a primitive form of cream and butter and things of this nature and that all things were taken care of at the home level. Plus they would thrash the wheat and do the things that uh, were harvested. They had to take care of all those things. So the, this thought that they, they sit and do nothing except for study and learn, what does it get them? What does it prosper the family? What does it prosper them? Is their life that much more enlightened? And if it was, why are they not creating miracles and bringing forth great understandings to people around them of the words and things that they are learning? I think that it has become an excuse for them to become a little bit lazy. But that is only my opinion. and. It, I am a woman, and so it will be taken into consideration. But I do not see it as profitable or bringing them a great enlightenment. Do you see these people as great enlightened leaders? They should be taking this information and becoming leaders with it. Well, I don't see them in a 
bright light. I do see the women that work uh, from those communities as a bright light, and I do hope they will uh, overthrow the old uh, ways. Um, I also want to ask you, you said that in your time there were only five books of the Torah, the, the Bible. Do you know who wrote them? We do not know who passed them. Most of them were passed down through word of mouth at the time when I was alive. And all five books had not been written, actually. But they only the Genesis and Exodus, I believe, had only been passed down. And stories from that, those eras, teaching how God had led his people and how he is the great lover of his people. And um, we told these stories to our children and passed them on by word of mouth. Many times there was only very little bit written down. And um, those were guarded and kept safe by the leaders and the elders of the tribes. I see. Um, my brother just told me that according to belief in East, in Israel, the first book were <coughs> first books were written by Moses or something. Is there any? Yes, truth? it is possible. Yes. Mm. Okay. He did have a great deal of information, and yes, of course, it was told that Moses had um, said many things, and. There was also other names that you probably would not recognize that had told stories and passed them down through their generations, through their family. And learning to write and read was not common. Most things were learned uh, through storytelling and through uh, people teaching their children what to do, farming and thrashing the grain and making butter. These things were, were taught through from uh, mother to daughter, father to son, etc. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, we heard many times Moses' words were these, and uh, Moses did this and that, and it was... Um, they're very inspiring, very inspiring and very miraculous stories. And it, it keep, kept the people inspired. And of course, as they were inspired, they would work and give praise to God and sacrifices to God. Many times when the men came to Abraham, they would bring an offering of a sheep or a ram or, or something maybe grain or whatever it was that they had. And when the women came to me, they would also bring an offering of grain or they would bring something with them that meant something to them. You see, women were a little more sentimental, so they did not really barter for the information as much as they cherished the information. And so they would give something of sentimental value to of themselves to me and and sometimes I couldn't even accept it it was so valuable to them but I would give them the information that they were needing anyway but it was a very moving time for me because many of them would bring great beautiful gifts to me and I I could not accept them things that were handed down through generations of uh, their families and I just couldn't do it Is there any other questions? I have a question. Yes, come here so we can hear you. How many, what was the average amount of children that were um, for each person-ish? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question. Because it was a growing tribe and because there was a great amount of life there, they would have usually three wives, usually, and, and some had more, but they would have around 10 children. 
10, ten children each? Yes, eight to ten. Now, some had even more, but remember, they have to take care of the children, feed the children, clothe the children. They made uh, clothing out of uh, animal furs and things of this nature. There were hunters. There were farmers. Uh, the hunters uh, bartered with the farmers, and, um, and clothing was valuable. And so, therefore... Uh, when making clothing, they did have cloth as well in some very primitive forms. There were some woven, uh, uh, they took the grain of the wheat shocks and they grew, they wove them together to make rugs and things of that nature. But sometimes they would use those also as a, a kind of covering, a blanket or a covering or even um, a shirt sometimes. It was not a comfortable shirt, but it was protective from the sun and things of that nature. If, those, if they could not barter or did not have enough to barter for the furs, they would make their own clothing out of the shocks and the plant life. Thank you. You're welcome. It's quite interesting when we think about the people that, you know, in, in, in the time where you were living, whereas you were quite advanced in years, many of the people yeah. who were having children were children in our estimation. And so yeah. when you think about some of the choices that were made, some of the words that were said, they were said by very, very young people. And Absolutely, yes. Yeah. In, if, if in your perspective now, as you look at the mentality of the people then versus the mentality of the people now who we consider be, to be adults, would you say that the mentality of the adults then was mature versus our adults? And what, you know what oh, I mean? Yes. Would a 13-year-old well, mother be as wise as a 25 or 30-year-old mother these days? They were taught by their mothers and fathers that this would happen early so they were prepared mm. in their minds that marriage would come early and mm. that they would have to do these certain things and be prepared for these certain things mm -hmm. the family unit was very strong then it was not like today where it is actually very weak people go off and they are not even close anymore they may not even eat together anymore but the family unit back then was all powerful and as each and very protected by the the father and the old elder sons and the mother of course mm -hmm. everyone was protective of their family that was what all they had is whatever cattle they they were able to obtain whatever that was handed down through uh, the generations, the, the cattle having um, its own calves and things of this nature, all the things that they had were strong and possessive things. And if someone would try to steal them, they would possibly many times lose their life protecting their cattle and their family and their, and their goods because this is all they had. They were a tight family unit, but yet it was a sense of community as well because they were bartering one for another, looking out for each other's best interests in many cases. Strong family friendships were, um, were there constantly. And, and so it was a sense of community. And of course, there were some families that were considered outcasts because they just did not get along well with people, or they inbred so much that they're, they were not able to uh, handle the responsibilities of work, working, and many times were left to, to die in the desert, and which was very sad if a child was not able to handle um, mentally what was coming, they would leave that child to die, and that was very sad for that time, but 
it was necessary for them not to have that burden because they had to be strong and they had to move forward in a very positive and uh, a very uh, uh, unified way. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, it does. And, and were women considered to be like property, like in other? In many, yes, they were property of their husbands. Um, and, but the wives also took possession of their children. Mm. The wives were uh, possessing their children because even the sons and the daughters, the wives considered them all equal, of course. In their life, it was not that the daughter was less valuable in most cases. There were some women that did devalue their daughters. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, when you have a child, you love that child because it is part of who you are, part of your heritage, your loins. It's part of your life and the, your love for your husband and etc. But many times the husband would not treat the daughters very well at times. Um, but it, it's much, it goes much deeper than that. There's a whole line of thought processes that go in the activity, into the activities of the parents toward the children, toward what they're capable of, what their skills are, what the, all the, the different things that were uh, done at that time. And sometimes they would devalue one of their children if they were not capable of doing a great amount of work. And so they it may not have been retarded or, or anything of that nature, but they were just less valuable. And so they would look at them as such. And in order for them to gain any value, they would have to prove that they could do much more than they were doing at the time. And the mothers would actually coach the children um, when they were growing up. When the fathers were out in the fields and with the cattle and hunting and all these things, mothers would take the children under their wings and say, you must learn these things and learn them well. And some of their children could not or had learning disabilities as children do today and could not learn as much as some of the others. Mm. So they were devalued a little. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for that clarification. Um, Christine would like to know, uh, We'll ask one more question. Christine? Yes, Sarah. Yes. Sarah um, the wife that had um, challenged you, was it because um, you had such a, um, a strong, um, you were such a strong uh, person in the other women's life and she was jealous? The woman that challenged me was not, was, I, I was a mistress of, uh, my husband's. She challenged me because she felt that her son was great, uh, should inherit uh, all the things of Abraham and, and my son should not. And she wanted to challenge me because she felt that he loved her greater than uh, he, he loved me. And so it was a great jealousy in that time, and she felt, uh, she actually felt that we were on equal grounds and that she could possibly take over my position. And so, that, she, that, is, that is why she challenged, is because she felt a great affection for my husband. So um, the mistress is considered, uh, she was, it wasn't considered adultery to have a mistress? Not if uh, if it was about childbearing. And that is what it was about. Abraham wanted more, came to me and said he wanted more children, and I could not bear any more, and so he took on mistresses to bear children for him. Oh, it's quite normal to have concubines and wives. As many yes. wives as you could support. And, and of concubines. course I would agree to have mistresses for him so that he may have more children. 
<laughs> Christine's in shock. <laughs> well, um, I'm trying to figure out what the, um, I could see where it's um, important, maybe for his status, the more children he has working for him, the, um, you know, the bigger his business is, or the more profitable his business is. But um, why he didn't marry them is kind of, I you kind of wonder, so what is, the, well, what's the value of marriage? Think carefully. He okay. did not marry them for respect of me. If he would marry them, they would be equal to me. They would be wife. They would be his wives. And wives are to be uh, protected and um, honored and such the like. He did love me very much. And so he took mistresses and concubines who were less than wives to show that he honored me. Oh, how nice. But whatever happened to the son then? <laughs> Sarah, we're not loving this explanation. From our, from our uh, 21st century uh, perspective, we, we see this matriarch or patriarchal um, disregard of the value of women, no matter well, how much he valued you, to also be less than what we would want for you. That's what we would like to say. I understand, but it was a different time and a different thought process. We understand a too. Different right? understanding how uh, how of how society ran in that that time, and yes. it was actually respectful to take a concubine or a mistress over a wife if you honored her and did not want anyone to be equal to her. Well, we will just say to you that that energy is shifting now. That yes, I know that. So we and would invite I'm you to read what it was like then. again so that yeah. you can enjoy this life. That's all I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> but like I have to tell you that I was very honored that he came to me and asked first before he just took on a concubine, a mistress, whatever. That was a, a sign of great respect, a, a sign of great love and honor that I knew about it ahead of time. So what happened to the boy then? To, um, to the, they were, after she had done what she had done, he actually released her and they were sent away. Her and her son. Oh, that's good. No backstabbing. Oh my God. No, it was, it was sad that she felt that I did not deserve Abraham. But be, but she was it was a jealousy thing, and yeah. women with jealousy issues were that was quite common in that day. But in this particular time, when Abraham was a leader in the spiritual community, to have this uprising against me was un. Uh, they could not tolerate it, and the councils and. Uh, decided she should go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I have a You're question. Welcome. Um, I have a question in the chat. Uh, a couple questions in the chat. One is from Alex. He's he was echoing what we were just saying that uh, this story really isn't cannot be. You have to look at it from the perspective of your time as opposed to yes. the perspective of this time frame. Um, but just let me make sure I have his question. His question, he wants to know what years this was. Oh, I do not know. We didn't keep track of years back then. Okay. We we kept track of seasons. Okay. It was uh, harvest season. But we did track keep track of how old we were individually by the, the cycles of the year. Okay. But we really didn't take... We didn't say, oh, this is year 500 BC. Of course, no BC. we could not do that. But in our time, we kept track of the ages of our children. We kept track of our own age. But we did not have a birthday necessarily. It was a time, if you were born in summer, perhaps you would celebrate a summer feast for all the birthdays and that were 
of the children that were born and the people that were born in the summer. And if you had a fall birthday, you would be able to tell the difference between the where the sun is in the sky and things of that nature and the weather changed slightly. And we would have a celebration for everyone that uh, celebrated their birthday in the in the fall, etc. Okay. Just um, noting where the sun is in the sky. And he would say, oh, it was about the, this setting of the sun that I was born in this. And the mothers would tell their children this. Oh, the sun is about where it was when you were born, you know, because they didn't have a calendar, of course, but, but uh, they went by the cycles of the suns and the moons and the stars. We looked at the stars quite a lot. And the stars were very, very visible back then um, because there were no city lights or things of that nature, but they were very bright and we could, and we uh, depended on them and how they were formed and where they were in the sky uh, as to what season and what time it was and things of that nature. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, there was a, there's also a question about, from Lily Pad, did you have contact with ETs or was that even a concept back then? Um, there were those that, uh, yes, but we didn't know they were ETs. We didn't say, oh, we have contact with ETs. They were godlike. We thought them as angels. There are some that saw the angels in, on the sides of the mountains. There are some, and they very well could have been angels, but looking back, I think perhaps they might have been extra oh, alien peoples. Or th those times when... Um, there were godlike appearances. Um, the, these could have been uh, aliens as well, but we so, saw them as signs from God. We saw them as beautiful, beautiful angels and things of this nature. But and we were all revered them as such. We revered them as messengers of God. Was it not so that uh, if we if we look back in the Bible story, there was the a moment when uh, uh, Moses was up the mountain talking to God, and exactly, and he came down, and people were worshiping idols that they had made. And was that yes. not considered to be blasphemy? When you blasphemy, yes, it was would... blasphemy mm. uh, because of the Ten Commandments. One of the commandments is, "There shall be no other gods before me," and. Uh, he saw that as a break, a broken commandment, and cast down, cast them down, and uh, condemned them for that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me just see if there's any more questions on our side. Actually, when they got the Ten Commandments, is when he came down from the mountain. And they had, they had made a brass, uh, a golden cow or a golden calf. Is it, was that, that was a, when the Ten Commandments were being collected? Was that a little uh, uh, story, or was that a mythical story? Was it? Did that the, there are in the Ark of the Covenant is the remainder of the ashes of the Ten Commandments from the stones, okay. and they are being in being protected yeah okay there's one last question that's beautiful because i think this is the last question we have for you but it's a very nice one it's from lana and she said sarah your difficulty to believe was described in the scriptures we often find it hard to believe something we want to experience in life what is your advice to us i didn't get the first part you cut out oh sorry uh sarah uh lana was asking um, about your difficulty to believe as described in scripture. She says, yes. we often find it hard to believe something we want to experience in life. What is your advice to any of us? If God says it, it is true. I learned that lesson. But when he said that I was going to bear a child at the, my late age, I sort of laughed. I said, that's not really very possible, is it? 
No one has children at this age. And so my belief system, although I did believe in God very strongly, I thought that he had misinterpreted what God had said. But he was correct. I did bear a child named Isaac at, a, at an advanced age. But the thing is about this is there was reasons for what God says and what, what God does. And so if there is a reason for God to interact in your, uh, your life and to change the way that it is going or for you to believe something that is hard to believe, then this is a time of growth. This is a time of experience. You will rise up and experience a greater portion of who you are. And you see, it showed me an aspect of myself that I did not see at that age, and that was new mother. I was a new mother with a loving child, and it changed the way I looked at the, in my entire life because I was no longer old and decrepit in many ways. I was taking care of a child. Of course, I did have handmaidens that were helping me and those that wanted to volunteer their time. And I did have my limitations being at a late age, but I felt younger. I felt more vital and I felt more a part of God's living word than I ever did before. It was a time of great spiritual uplifting for me. And even though childbirth was very difficult, I felt blessed and I felt revitalized after it was all over, having not died in childbirth. I was revitalized and happy and filled with the, the praise of, to God for what he had accomplished through me. And it changed my whole thought <laughs> process. And also whenever the women would come to me after that, they said that there was a greater glow, a greater understanding about how to deal with them than ever before. Because some of them would, have, would come back and they'd say, oh, Sarah, you've changed. You're, you're glowing. You're beautiful. You're, God is with you. And they could... And the words of that came to me at those times after uh, the birth of my son were just so much deeper, so much more gratifying, and so much more helpful to the people because they may have been the same words that I said before, but they were filled with meaning and understanding and experience more than they ever were before. And so they would feel what I had to say more than just hear what I had to say. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, Ian has a question for you. Ian. Hi, welcome very much <clears throat> um, this afternoon. I have a question regarding the your husband taking a concubine in, in the name of childbirth. And what is your feeling today on having that be one of the pivotal moments throughout world history um, that has from, I think from my, my perspective and correct me if I'm wrong, had been the creating of the dividing point between the Palestinian and the Jewish people. Yes. Is that accurate? Is that accurate? In some ways it is. There are the 12 tribes of, of Judaism and they separated because of different, slight differences in their belief systems. And this was one of them. Some did not believe that a concubine taken to have childbirth was acceptable. And so they moved off into their own realms. And you have the 12 tribes still with you today. The Shiites, the Muslims, the... There are many of those early people that broke off into their different areas. Uh, I don't say Muslims there, but before that they were um, there. Oh my goodness, I cannot think of all the, 
the different names, but the Shiites are one of them. And there's so many. The Jewish faith is still part of the 12 tribes. Uh, and they are broken off because of different ways that people believed and how they interpreted the word of God at that time so that they would be leaders. Many did it out of pride. They said, I believe this way because they actually, in their mind, wanted to rise up and be a leader over the people and teach the people how they felt that things should be. And many people agreed with them how things should be. But um, it did divide the peoples, and they will come back together again eventually. Okay, thank you. That's One other question. You. That's on that's maybe another that's controversial that's theme. Theme. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean uh, one of the uh, commandments that commandments not to worship no other god before me. <clears throat> when yes. that when that text was created or that commandment was issued, <clears throat> did that does that did that also or should that have also applied to the worship of Jesus? Um, you mean that he was a god and they shouldn't, be, or that he was not a god? Uh, both. But basically, should he have been worshipped under the eyes of the Ten Commandments, or turned into a god? No. And I he, controversial. Came a separate, he came to change the word of God. He, right. came, he came to be embellish the word of God, and God sent him to uh, change the thoughts of the people because they were much too legalistic, much too uh, law-like. And there was no love in that. There was no, uh, there was no uh, compassion in the law. It was follow the law or die. It was follow the law or be held accountable by God that you did not follow the law. Do you understand? That was it. The Ten Commandments were the law. You had to obey them. And believe me, it's impossible to, to follow all Ten Commandments. It's impossible. You will break one somewhere in your life. If well, not inadvertently because you will covet somebody's um, uh, possessions and you will be jealous of somebody in here or there. And what has happened is this. Um, the law back then was to be followed to the letter. And many times some of these tribes would take it so far as to kill it it says obey your mother and father it, they would stone their children if they had disobeyed to a point where they felt that it was dishonorable for the family do you understand if it if it was just something bad you like um uh, doing this or that or the other thing. But if they stole something from a neighbor or they did something very dishonorable and they were taught that they were not supposed to, if they were of age of accountability, they would be stoned. Correct. Uh, and I understand that. Thank you very much. And my question was, you know, more specifically with regards to Jesus being worshipped or being thought of as a God. Jesus came to change the law, and so they did look down on him. They, The Pharisees said, he's breaking the law. He's healing on Sunday. He's doing this. He's with the, the sinners, and he's spending much time with the sinners. Who is this to be uh, considered a, a religious person or a, a man of God who spends all his time with sinners and uh, those that are harlots and things of this nature? He cannot be from God. He is not following the word of God. But when T Jesus was teaching, he was teaching out of love and telling them that God wants them to, them to love one another. And this was outside of the Ten Commandments because um, even though it says love your neighbor as yourself, it was not a compassionate love. It was more of I will respect you as my neighbor but do i actually love you i i, I don't think so but right. god uh, jesus was there to bring love compassion and all the things of of 
a new era of understanding who God really was. Right. I just find it very interesting and amazing to the effect that those two incidences, you know, the, the, the son born to Abraham, as well as, you know, Jesus writing in and it's in direct defiance of the Ten Commandments and how history or, you know, things proceeded, how those two things by themselves well, created the religious wars that, re, that exist today. Thousands well, the thing is, Jesus never said to disobey the Ten Commandments, but he did say that he was here to fulfill the word of God and to bring life into, into it. And that is what he did. And you're right. There is many things in the Old Testament, as you call it, those the ancient books, that do say about the coming of this person that will be a change, that will be the ruler. But they see him, you see, they expected Jesus to come as a ruler, as a king, uh, but he came as a peasant, but he ruled their hearts. That is where his uh, kingdom was, in the hearts of men. Well, that's interesting, a way of looking at it. Thank you very, thank you very much. Yes. So, Okay, I think that's all the questions that we have. It's been a very interesting discussion. I don't know if there's any Thank more you. questions in your room. But I do not think so. Very well. We shall move on. Oh, well, thank you, Sarah, for coming and offering your, your perspective to us. And this is, we hope you come back. Bless Much you love to you all. Thank you. And I hope that I've given you a little bit of understanding. Of course, I could not explain it as actually how it was. But I, I do try to put that perspective on it that was from that era. Of course, I've had many lives between there. And so my thought process and memory of that time is good, but it's a little sketchy on some of, the, the, of what we did. But I love the fact that in that day and age, we did a bow down to God as a community together. When Abraham would speak, they would bow before him and they would honor God, not Abraham as much, but they were looking to the words that he would speak to be anointed by God and to be a word above what they were expecting and to prosper their crops, their animals, and their families, and to move things forward. And they took much great hope and understanding from his words. And this is what kept us together as a community and as friends and as families and as, oh, it just, it just united us so much. But you can never possibly see that the way I see it. I can visualize it now as they were all in the desert together, bowing down and praising God for his abundance <laughs> for that year, for what they were able to gather. The, the animals were prosperous. The weather was good. Their crops were good. And God was praised. And that was a great and wonderful um, energy that was lifting from the, the people to God at that time. And I would love to see that happen in this day and age. You do not see many communities that send their energies to God in that way anymore. No, there's, there's so much now more focus on the self and everything outside as opposed to God being part of every breath. I just yeah. wanted to say that because I think that that is something that is necessary for you to get together and send your energies as one to God because the blessings are multitudinous. Is yes. that a word? Yes. yes, it is a word. Very good. <laughs> well, thank you again for offering a perspective that we don't currently share, but reminding us that what we 
perceived to be done from a different time was also done. It's not just, uh, it's not, it's the time is very important into how we look at a situation, what was happening, what was the tradition, what was the society like at that time? Yes. I didn't even get into how they made things and how they, uh, how they bartered. There's so much to the culture that we didn't even touch on, but it is so vast. But uh, I must go. There are others that are waiting. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you, very much, thank you for having me today. I love you all, and I give you all the blessings of God. For he has not really changed in the billions of years that he has existed. Always, I, he's always existed, but he's not really changed except for to become more loving and more understanding. Thank you so much. We do have one question before you go. You can just exit on this. Liney wants to know if the commandments have changed since they were first given. No, the commandments will always be the same, but the, the feeling toward them has changed. The, the way they are viewed has changed. They have not changed words, but perhaps for some people, they have changed meaning because love introduced into the law changes how the law is perceived. Thank you. Thank you for that. Much love to you. Very well. Greetings, I am Takur. Welcome, Takur. I see that there is much emotion in the in the things that uh, Sarah has said to you. We, we um, have quite some questions, yes. Yes, it was very interesting, and I found it very interesting to our culture as well, because we did not, I have no memory, or we have no recollection of those times in our early culture that were similar to yours. Mm. Things were very different in our early culture because perhaps we were more of an animal nature than your people. But I believe if you go farther back than that per period, your people were probably much more primitive. Mm. Um, just before but you get we started, remember, started. pardon? Sorry. So just when we, I, I just had the impulse to ask if Jim needs a little water because it was quite 45 minutes of, or an hour and 15 minutes of really nonstop talking. So just wanted to see if there was water yes. needed. He will accept water. Yes. water. yes. Thank you. One moment, please. Yes. I think there has to, oh, yes. Yeah. Here it is. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. All right. I was, I forget what I was saying, but that was, that's all right. You were talking I was just comparing our early cultures, and um, I think that they were a little different, actually. So I find that very interesting that yours was uh, very tribal. Did your did your culture uh, go through the sort of uh, we, because we went through many ages in our in our Earth history? Yes, um, we did as well. Okay, but remember, we are more um, you are more humanoid in many respects than we are. Although we are advanced because we've been around longer, mm -hmm. we came from a more what you would call an animal source. Oh. Um, 
but it, it is that our our very ancient times are of hunting and uh and of fighting for uh leadership positions and uh things of this nature so i believe that you you the way she portrayed your ancient times seemed a little bit more civilized almost than our ancient times but then i'm looking at at it as that perhaps you didn't go back far enough to show that part of your primitive nature right 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 and um, we have several questions to occur if you're ready or if you did you have a message for us initially or well i was going to talk about the earth energies right now Please. there's a lot of timeline problems at this moment hmm. and those of you that are aware of timeline problems um will feel them um if they have had some very interesting usual with the timelines and some people are suffering because of it has anyone out there been um a victim of this uh phenomena at this time some of you that are more third dimensional will not uh, feel it so greatly but if you are very sensitive to fourth dimensional uh energy and higher you might be thrown into a great depression or uh feeling great disruption in your being so uh, we're holding on uh, we're holding fast to the the fact that this is calming down we're trying to take care of it the wobble of the earth also is is a great uh problem and uh, much concern because uh, not because of the wobble itself but because of what it does it makes greater winds it uh, causes earthquakes and volcanoes it uh, changes where how the axis is reacting and the axis is going moving and we're not it's hard to tell when the earth is at a wobble how to regulate things properly if you understand what we we're talking about the axis we cannot tell how much the axis is actually really moving when you have a slight wobble on the earth and so we have to keep very very close attention to this and to the activity of the jet streams and how it is affecting mother earth as a whole um i i i, I don't feel that but what i have seen and what we've seen in the earth energies in the last week since that school shooting is the young people ages between 14 and 18 suddenly surging forward with incredible yes. incredible determination and energy and they are here and they are determined yes, yes. and they are focused unlike any generation i've ever seen come surging forward it's been spectacular to see i i may be I was just my my impulse is that we have to get out of their way, have their backs, hold the space for them, and and sort of just yeah, it's been incredible. They rose up like right overnight, and it was beautiful to see. And there's a well, few of them. It is what it is, what, it is it, because the Earth is trying to survive. And uh, this, this is their survival instinct, instinct speaking to them. Yeah. They feel a great amount of danger. They feel that they are uh, under attack and they must fight back. They must stand and not be violent because that's what they're fighting against. But they must survive this. They see themselves as the era of school shootings yes the, the the era where schools are being shot at and so this is a survival mode for them and it's strong humans have a very strong survivalistic sense about them humans have a very strong compassion for one another when things of this nature happen they actually can relate to one another because they are feeling much 
uh, similar things. And let me add something to that. Empathy on your planet is growing yes. in the youth. Yeah. And also uh, the ability to communicate mentally is growing in your youth. And this is connecting them in a stronger way than any uh, youths have been connected before. They're feeling each other. They are understanding each other and creating a bond that will not be easily broken. Well, I, I just have the feeling of them, that, and they've said it, and I also say it too, um, that they're coming and that they realize that they are, if they're not ready to vote, they will be ready to vote. They are. They have found their life purpose, and they're stating it now, very loud and very strong. I, I think it's. It was going to be exciting in a very positive way. I think. Over well, the older population of your planet is laughing at them because they're just kids. It'll yeah. they'll get over it. Yeah. But this is not the case. No, I don't think so at all either. Thank you for that. Yeah. They are, but they are dismissing it. Yes. At least to this point, until they start voting. There is going to be some activities <laughs> that will make them focus on the youth and make them focus on the fact that these, uh, this youth, this group of individuals that is coming up in this world right now, mean business, and they will have to take notice. And that will come very shortly. Yeah, well, they've already tried smearing them and dismissing them with a lot of conspiracy yes. straight ahead, which says to me that they're scared, which I think that's great that they're scared. Because I, I, I agree. In some senses, uh, they're either scared or overconfident. Six of one, half a dozen of the other, Tikar. Exactly. Um, we do have some questions. Much blessings to you. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. Um, we have a Thank question you. from uh, first from uh, first from Sheer and then Christine. Very well. Hello, Tikar. How are Greetings. You? I'm very well, thank you. Very, very busy and very, very uh, concerned about your planet's well-being. But, but personally, I am well. <laughs> well, I'm also concerned, but I know that all will be well. God has a way of uh, changing and shaping things in his own manner. <laughs> Um, I want to ask you about the next government meeting. I know that uh, everyone looked uh, towards May as the next event, and we're reaching the beginning of March. Do you have any speculation if it's going to happen? At this point, there is so much going on in the government and so much disruption in the governments. Um, not only in the U United States government, but in the Israeli government, in oh, the yeah. Russian government, in the Iranian government, in the Egyptian governments. There are several areas where the governments are in great upheaval. The Syrian government, the Pakistan government. I am, I'm looking at all the, these different places, the Chinese government as well. There is many, the North Korean government, I, I could go on and on, but there is much upheaval on your planet and much dis, uh, they are very disconcerted about many things. And it's, it's finding a focus that I am concerned about with your people. They are all focused on different things with different nations and different threats and different uh, possibilities and the stock market up and down, stock market up and down, and the world markets are up and down, and the way that things are happening with um, the world balance as a whole is thrown off completely. Um, I'm just wanting to get things, the energies back into a line, so maybe in their thought processes can come a little bit more back in line as well. But I'm seeing that 
there is so much disarray, even more than you can imagine. Some of it's being reported, but many of many things are not being reported. And that is the part that concerns me. Is the entire upheaval is the new age that, uh, that is coming? Like I see in Israel, actually, it, there's a lot of drama because uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is now accused in two cases of uh, brides. Another case is now going to trial. There is possibly another case going to trial. He was he had a very busy week. They speaking about an early election. So is it does it mean that the entire upheaval all around means a new generation yes. comes to uh, lead the countries? What ha what is happening is people are being exposed right and left for their uh, negative actions all over the world. Not only there, but the United States in Russia, in North Korea, um, everywhere. People are being exposed, and the world is now knowing who these people are, and they thought they could trust some of these people. It goes to the very tops of some of these nations. They will be implicated eventually in some of these very negative and very uh, destructive thought processes. And so it will demand that things change on your planet in a worldwide forum. I see. So maybe there, uh, the meetings are not occurring, but something else positive happening. Something instead. has to be done, yes. And some of these changes are being uh, helped by outside forces because they want to see a great change, but they cannot personally interact. So they put thoughts in people's minds, put um, dreams in people's minds, they put information in people's minds, and this is allowable, and it always has been. The government or the external of the alien and but you see as they see it um any positive spiritual or good information given to the human population at this time can only work in a positive way at least that is their uh, thought process so they are just giving those that are very sensitive some thought process some channelers are able to channel more positively uh, and the negative ones are starting to be questioned. They, the negative theory people, the conspiracy theory people are starting to be questioned at times because that is a very negative way to present information to the earth. And so they, but others may say, yes, but we need to know the truth. But is a conspiracy theory really truthful? It, can, it has truthful parts to it, but it does not uh, spread uh, a total truthful message because most conspiracy theories, you cannot know their true base and their true fullness. <laughs> so to spread information that's, only partially true is dangerous. I see. And are there any good news to share? Something that, that happened recently? Of course. More positive news. I'm not spreading any conspiracy theories. I'm giving you facts and figures about your Earth and the uh, oh. dangers that are in, are in it. I'm not telling you that anybody is conspiring to do this. But... I am telling you that there is good and positive things that will come out of it. Okay, thank you very much and much, much love to you. Thank you, Cher. And much love to you. Christine, you have a question. Hi, Tucker. Um, greetings. Greetings and blessings. Um, this is kind of, <laughs> this is more personal with uh, my arthritis. Um, my little finger was beginning to be able to touch to the palm, but it's starting to, um, 
calcify again and it's getting stiffer again. So is there some, yeah, so is there something that I'm not um, that I'm not doing right? No, I don't think so. We'll take a look at that. Because okay. the pinkies were the first worked on. Perhaps yeah. they have uh, recalcified, uh, but it would have to have been very quickly. So I'll have to take a look at that. Okay. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you, everyone, You're for welcome. letting me ask that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, there's a few questions that we have um, from some of the members, so I'm going to go through them. Uh, Johannes, yes, wants to, Johannes has a question for you. He, he wonders yes. what age is the human body designed for? Um, he said it was channeled by uh, someone called Wonders, uh, but he wanted to know what, what your opinion was or your experiences with what age. You mean are we what doing? is the optimal age for humans? Is that the question? Yeah. Yes. The optimal age for humans is early 30s. But the thing is, um, most well, humans. Longevity, I think he was referring to us. Oh, longevity. Mm. Yes. What is the age for longevity? Your average lifespan at this time is about 78. But in the future, it will be. Um, uh, it depends on what you're talking about in the future. It will be much uh, older than that in the future. But right now, your life, uh, the life expectancy, of course, is different in every single culture. It, depending on the nourishment and what kind of culture you live in, your life expectancy is different. But for United States and and for most uh, cultures that are higher functioning and have good uh, nutritions and things of that nature, the life expectancy is about 78. Is that the answer to your question? Hello? Sorry, he was asking what is the maximum that the human body can do, very pretty much. Oh, uh the longest a human body can last is about 118 or 20 years mm. because of the way that it is. The, the thing is, it does not last that long because of the degradation of the third, the third dimension it takes its toll on the human body. It is actually made to last much longer than it lasts. Right. Now, there are those that live to 102, 103, 105. That they have uh, unusually good gene pools and have uh, lived probably fairly well. But the body was made to last for about 118 to 120 years. If it, if it was not set to degradation by smoke and atmospheric uh, confusion, uh, toxins and things of this nature but there are so much toxic uh toxins now it's it's very difficult right and in the past they just did not have the proper nutrition in the past they did not have uh the proper uh ways to control illnesses you see you you have the means by which to uh elongate your life with medication as well. Right. So um, there are many things. The, the body is made to last for quite a while. Okay. Um, there's another question from within uh, the YouTube chat from Cami, and it, it, it kind of might dovetail into this. She's asking about, in your culture, in your ship, do you work with AI? And, and in what way? Yes. Every single culture in the universe that is advanced has robotics and cybernetics and uh, bio uh, bio technologies. Your planet also does as well. Okay. Hey, excuse me. Your planet also has biotechnologies. Okay. Um, we do work with artificial intelligence, but not. We do not add the emotion portion we use them more as computers and wait 
help helpmates for things that are um, are just uh, trivial in some ways to you, but we use them as technological beings so that we can have help moving forward and actually relieve ourselves of some of the work. Now, there are some species that have developed uh, great AI beings that are emotional and have consciousness and even sentience. And right. some of these have broken away from their original societies and have become their own species. Okay, that was part the second part of the question. Yeah, but it, but yes, with there is an AI species mm -hmm. that is its own. It is a part you. I noticed that there you have a television program, and it's uh, there's a, a AI called the Borg on it, and they are similar to the Borg except that they don't go around uh, assimilating everything, but they do go around. Uh, testing, questioning, and uh, testing not the people as much as the earth, the the ground surfaces. They also test the people, but they don't assimilate them as such. Okay, thank you so very much. Amanda has a question. Amanda has a question. Hello, Tucker. Hello. Greetings. Greetings. I just have a curiosity about the recent UFO activity in Anderson, Nevada. Yes. Was that? And what is your? That? Yes. There was a big battle that was recorded. A big battle. Yes. Oh, in the sky. Correct. Yes. Yes. Um, your area, Earth has been used as a battleground more than once. And this just happens to be um, something inadvertent. Now, we didn't know it was going to happen. Neither did the blue avians, or else they would have never let th this particular species in. But th they were immediately ejected, of course, because of what was going on. But they did, they did come under the guise of being a very positive species, but they were actually uh, being paid to uh, interact with another species in a negative way. So this was a rogue group from a very positive species that did something very negative. Now, um, yes, it was observed, it was photographed, it was filmed, uh, but it will not happen again. Okay. It was very, very interesting to watch and dissect. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Marlene you has a well. question. Greetings, yes. Takara. I have um, a message. Yes. And my message is my gratitude uh, to the healing teams from uh, Lyra and the Arcturus High Command for their speedy intervention on my behalf. So I'm forever grateful. Oh, you're, you're welcome. This is uh, we do as best we can. <laughs> Thank you. This is a great example of collective work with our brothers and sisters. Um, also, I was asked to share a message, if I may. Yes. So for those participating in this webinar and for future listeners, I'm sending out a clarion call to all light warriors and light workers to be ever more committed to the great plan of liberation of humanity and Gaia. Acknowledge who we are. Acknowledge why we chose this time for being on planet. Acknowledge our individual commitment and mission on Earth, whatever it may be. Stand courageous and strong as a collective of earth humans alongside positive galactic brothers and sisters who are here with us now we are in the end game be the light and let us be the mission that we chose 
hold the light and may our thoughts and actions be positive and support God's plan. Adonai. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And let me mention this Thank as you, well. Marlene. After the end game, there is a beginning game. And that is a wonderful and most amazing game to be starting. But first, you have to get through this one. And I know that many of you are becoming more courageous and many of you are becoming more committed to your goal. But what that means is becoming committed to who you are because you will never find your mission until you know who you are. You will never find your way in, in, in uh, making a difference until you know that you have, you have been honest with yourself and come to the fullness of your awareness within yourself. I know that n that will never all fully happen in this lifetime, but you must <laughs> grow and be as uh, much of yourself as you can be and stand courageous and not be ashamed of who that is and not be ashamed to move forward and be positive and not be ashamed to say, I, I don't agree with that. I must I tell you what I believe. And I think a lot of people do not say what they believe because so society says so much to everyone in their songs, in, their, in the way they act, in the way they uh, build their businesses. It's, it tells people who they are, but you are not part of who they are. Many of you are not part of that, that thought process. You go beyond that and work with uh, groups of people gr beyond uh, what third dimension dictates as the truth or as successful or as what should be. And I congratulate you for taking that stand and being yourself and knowing what uh, the truth is in your heart and soul and asking God to help you with that strength and that dedication. Well, I didn't, didn't want to get on a soapbox, but, it was, but that sort of inspired me to uh, go there. Thank you, Tucker, for your kind words. Yes, it starts within us. And to take a yes, stand of who we are and do it. We came here for yeah. We have a purpose. Let's get this thing done. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And it's, it's not easy when there are so many stacked against you. But you, if to stand up and be yourself is a respectable thing. And people will respect it. They may not say so. They may not act so. But they have to, in their heart of hearts, say, boy, that was really gutsy. And I really, you really have to admire someone that stands up for what they believe. And I know that you all feel that way as well. You admire those that stand against the crowd and say what they believe. Thank you. Be one of those that are admired. Okay, thank you so very much. Um, there's a question from Michelle, and she said that uh, she, let me make sure I have the whole question. She said that um, she had a dream and she saw angels, two of them in her third eye. She said, um, can you maybe tell her something about that, what that meant? That just means that the information that's coming into the third eye at this time is as of a spiritual nature. Remember, when the third eye opens, that means that more information is being allowed in. and. It would appear that your third eye is opening and there is some angelic information or spiritual information that is coming in that you are able to understand and that you are able to now perceive. Uh, it may also be the introduction of some of your guides to you and they're letting you know that you have angel participation in your life. 
or in your guidance. Um, I, I see it as information, though, coming to the third eye. As the third eye opens, this kind of information can be really amazing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. There's also a question from uh, Johannes. Uh, he was. It's it's from his girlfriend. Um, he's he's. She said that she was just coming home um, in her car, and a lot of emotions started coming through. And she really you had to use her voice to express in sounds the feelings. It, it really took her over for a few minutes, and she just wants to know if you have any insight as to what that was. I do. What is happening is there's a purge of something negative within her. And it chose that moment to come out. There was a reason for it. It Her sensitivity level was in the, the right place for it to be purged out of her system. Obviously and food that yes. Right now are Excuse me. I think there is some other actions being taken now. Stay. What is going on? It's it. They've removed the. They removed it from your thing. I think. I see. And um, yes. Um, yes. It would seem that one of the some of the emotions that needed to come out came out at that time. They were purged from the system. She should feel actually quite elated at this time and feel a little bit lighter. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's two statements from Don, um, Don Parkinson that we know. He, he wants to know if you need any applications of energy in a certain direction, please let him know. He will do that. Of course. And he also uh, is re uh, referring to a situation beneath the Torque Mountain in Ireland. He was wondering what the status was, and if you can speak in generalities, he will. What was the name of the mountain? Torque Mountain in Ireland. Yes. Um, it was recently cleansed. Okay. Thank you very much for that. I could go into more detail, but it would not mean anything to anyone. But... There was someone from actually this area that went there and had it and did a cleansing on the entire mountain. They felt the negativity. They felt that there had been a lot of sacrifices in a negative way done there and cleansed the mountain in its fullness. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Christine had an additional question. Yes. Um, to Kerr, um, on um, the progress of um, cleansing our um, our uh, political system, there are some people who are psychic, some who say that um, Trump will go on for um, another uh, four years, and then there are some people who are saying in three months um, he will be out. So what I my thing is is um, does this have anything to do with uh, timelines and um, depending upon which timeline we would like to belong to? Um, and we no, you our... don't have a choice. You, they are sort of forced upon you. Oh. Uh, your timeline is your timeline. If you change a timeline, you will, notice as, you will notice differences in it. There will be changes, and some some of them will be subtle, but you will notice uh, differences. But you will eventually come back to your original timeline because that's where you belong. But if you are jolted to another timeline, you will notice differences and diff and they will be, some of them will be very obvious. You will see uh, different kinds of automobiles than you ever saw before. Uh, buildings will be missing uh, that were there before. Uh, buildings will be there that were never there before things of this nature uh signs along the road things just things you may notice from other timelines but if you're not very attentive some of it will just pass you by so if you're not attentive it won't matter but if you're a, someone that pays close attention to details and uh where you are and all these things you will notice a lot of small changes so 
yes, you are actually not, uh, you will not choose your timeline. It, it is the timeline that you were born to. So uh, what was the other part of the question? Well, um, in about three months, I think somebody had oh, um, the more Trump than thing. Yes. Yeah. Let me more tell you about it. Okay. Um, they're seeing a shadow of the future. The future cannot be predicted positively or correctly by most people <laughs> because many decisions are to be made before the future outcome is decided. There are two ways the future can go. Yes, he could be out shortly or he could last a long time. The decisions are with those that are in power around him. And the people. If there are certain people in society that are very powerful with money and with uh, energies that can uh, affect the way these things go. And it is up to uh, these powerful people in many senses and how they feel that they should react uh, whether he will be out soon or later. I, I personally see that um, it would be difficult for him to last four years at this point, but that is just my opinion, and I do not know for sure. Yeah, I think um, what it was leaning to is lately he's been um, not very <laughs> all there mentally. Uh, of course. And there, that's what... Um, there are... He, there are so many things surrounding him, he cannot focus. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. You're um, welcome. There's a similar question from the chat, um, in, but about Canada. There was a woman exclaiming that we never speak about Canada. She's of the opinion yes. that Trudeau is not the best president, and she wants to know, or prime minister, excuse me, and she wants to know, will he be out? Uh, come here, will there be a change? Trudeau. Will there be somebody else? Yes. I'm of a differing opinion, I, so I'm not going to say what she said about him, but she doesn't like him. I understand. There are many p opinions about him, and it has to do with uh, cultural understandings in some ways and how people conduct their business and how he is conducting his business as a leader. And at this point, he has done nothing that is really wrong in the sense of uh, pol uh, legally. Uh, he made some political mistakes, but I think that he is going to stay there for a little longer, unfortunately, for this uh, lady that Carol. does not like him. For Carol, yeah, she's an anti-immigration. She does not like him, but it looks like he will stay there for a little while longer. Hmm. I see him as, I, I have to be honest, I see him as one of those, because of his age, I see him also as one of those young, determined, very inclusive people that wants to have a better world and is willing to stick out his neck to have it. it he has made some political mistakes in that area, though. Yes. But, um, yes, he stuck it out his neck, and it was a good thing that it wasn't chopped off. But it's um, he will do that again, and he it will he will make changes, and I see that some of the more conservative people will not like that. Very well. I'm sorry, Carol. Is there another question? Yes, yeah, Sheer has an, a question about leaders as well. Uh, speaking about leaders, those who are coming and might go shortly, I am wondering about Benjamin Netanyahu because he's reigned the most years that anyone have ever uh, reigned in Israel, and people just uh, see him as an invis invincible. But there are so many uh, cases opening against him. This week was just uh, very dramatic. Can you tell me something about his uh, future? He is not invincible. But 
he is beloved by there are some that will not believe what is being said they will actually turn away this information and say that it's not believable that they've known him for many many years and that he is uh, stable and true and they will not believe that any of this information is true however they will find that there are some of this information is true he is not invincible but he is powerful and that's all i will say at this point yeah it's <laughs> everything that i thought thank you yes okay, okay. um ian uh, would like to uh, ask a question yes hi to blessings to you and thanks for joining us today my question has hey. to do with uh trump and the russians and is did the action did the russians and to what extent have involvement and influence in our elections and if so did it actually change the outcome their, yes their internet areas were uh paid to disrupt and uh put propaganda into the the medias and then people would spread that propaganda as they find it within themselves so it was a perfect plan all they had to do is plant some information uh, that was very bombastic or the, that people resonated with or believed and then it would spread itself throughout the nation yes they did have some collusion with that however and uh, how far up did it come from that is the question that no one really knows because it is so was so secretive how they were given the payments and informations but there were some people from your united states that did uh, understand what was happening know what was happening and those people are going to be revealed at this time now the president found out about it after it already had started so that is why he's saying that he doesn't have anything to do with it but he did have knowledge of it at some point but he just ignored it and he continues to ignore it Cor correct and it was kind of along the lines of what you had mentioned earlier about those with power and money and i was wondering if there if that was tied into it you know the the russian conspiracy to influence the election well there and, was money laundering involved with this as well and that has so, to do with the that have already been indicted it, yes well some there's okay. still more money laundering at hand but um the thing is it was many different things it was not just the election but it was power money and um real estate uh lifestyle changes in some cases it is a very interesting and complex web that is there at this time it actually started off quite simply and uh turned itself into a great web of of uh deceit i guess i i take it there's probably going to be a lot more to be revealed and will it all be revealed at some point or will parts of it always now, remain probably hidden? about 90 percent of it there are we 10 percent that is so obscure obscurely hidden they probably won't find it okay so <clears throat> on a long it is, it is what it is it is what those, it is along those same lines you don't you don't have any indication though as far as trump's involvement whether that his involvement would be a factor in how long he would remain president no the only thing that i can i know at this time is that he just knew about it but he did not have any involvement in it okay thank you okay, thank you you're welcome uh, Dave has a question. Hello, Takur. Yeah. Greetings. I was curious, uh, with your civilization, do you base your leaders around their level of vibration or their level of consciousness? In many cases, experience and understanding and um, how they relate to the people is how we usually find our leaders 
Okay. Um, it is similar to how you find yours, except we, uh, our leaders are much older and more experienced. You uh, sometimes uh, elect your leaders at earlier ages, but oh, we shit. wait until that they're very, uh, they're more senior. But you see, our people like live longer, so senior to us is just over a hundred. So they still have about uh, seventy or eighty years to live. So that is still good. They have a lot of good experience. They have a lot of good understanding. People have checked their backgrounds many times. They are good and positive and intelligent and caring people. Thank you very much. You're um, welcome. We are at the top of the hour, um, Takur. So um, oh, if, you yes. would, if you would like to take another question, you can, or if... Uh, um, One more question and then we can go. Okay. Um, I have a question. <laughs> very um, good. Many years ago, I am very quite sure that I not only heard the announcement of Billy Graham's death, but I watched the funeral on TV. And then through some, and I never heard about Billy Graham again until a few years ago when I in fact heard about the Mandela effect and one of the people that were talking about it was saying that not only was Billy Graham still alive, but he had never died in the first place and along with all the other things. So now Billy Graham in my history has died again. So for the second time and apparently, yes. um, but can you give any comment on that and on your perspective? Because I imagine we jumped. I jumped. Some people jumped with me. I might have jumped into a timeline. I think we jumped as a group, yes. but not the everyone. Timelines, at this point, the timelines are very jumbled. Yeah. And he and in sometimes he did pass a while ago. And yeah. in this timeline that you are that you are experiencing, he is ninety nine and has passed. Right. Um, yes, timelines are being confused. And uh, originally, your timeline, you are not on the your correct timeline at this point, and you will return to it at some point, but it, they have been jumbled quite a bit. Uh, Shear was saying that for him, uh, it was oh. Morgan Freeman, and he's died three times since he is known of him. In his time, line. I thought he was still alive. Well, he is in this timeline, but it sure yes. probably jumping all over the place. Apparently, so it was like uh, there are those that will be jumping. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are those of you uh, that are very important people. We will say that that yeah. have been jumping around different timelines for quite a while now. But yeah. just recently, there was a huge timeline discrepancy and that was not uh, the intention to bounce people around but it did do so can you can you say what the purpose of the timeline jumps are well actually it was sabotage on the individual label on the yeah on the individual uh security for our safety then security yes if there is if you are an important person and there is someone after you, you can jump timelines and they will not find you. Mm. Okay. Interesting. But that is uh, something for only the greater fourth dimensional people. But many of you will have that uh, probability in the future. You, They say, well, won't my body still be on this? Uh, isn't there a body that comes to take the place? And that is true. However, it will be in a different place completely than what there it is expected to be. So they will not be looking for uh, that body in the place that it will be. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's very interesting. And I've, we've talked about it before, but it was just because his funeral is, it is today. security for most good. But what is happening now is sabotage of the timelines and the time lords are working to get things back in order. Thank you. Thank you. When uh, well, the one last thing is, if we do shift back to our original timelines, will we bring the memory with us, like we've brought it forward, or do you know? Uh, some of you will, uh, most of you will. You will have distinct, uh, different memories than what you are experiencing. Some of you will uh, uh, 
find deja vu as part of your experience when yeah. you return to your timeline because you will overlap. Uh, you have will have lived something and it will overlap in this timeline. And that is um, something that will uh, you will experience as well. Or time lag, you will feel like time is going very, very slowly and not moving forward. And and in fact, you could be looking at the clock and it will be seeming to be going slower than usual. So yeah, there are many effects of the time aligns. Okay. Well, thank you so very much, Takar. It's always a pleasure to speak with you and um, we love you very much. Thank you. And I wanted to say to Don Parkinson, thank mm. you very much for all your efforts. We appreciate it. He's he's watching in the chat right now. So thank you. Thank you. Much love, and I will leave you now. Thank you so much. Namaste. Jeff. Namaste. Hello. Welcome. Hello, Jim. Hi. Hi. We let I let you go a little bit longer. We were we were having a nice flow with the car, so thank you. Okay, very good. That's fine. Yeah. So she was receiving a telepathic message just before we left. I oh. don't know what it was, but I, I saw her move into telepathic message mode. So oh. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. Oh, okay. <laughs> but she did stop. Did you see her hesitate there? Yes. Yes. She stopped there. She was receiving a message. Mm. So that was interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm. All right. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank oh, you. do we have any closing prayers? Does anyone want to get closing, closing blessing? Prayer? I want to go. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Yeah. Nasata kaya kusutoya nakati, Arianta kasata hiya kasunawa, Ayo kusukuta kaya kia namata, Aro kuro watakaya hi sata. Namaste. The, mess the universe has many messages for us. Open your ears and your hearts. They will be coming in great balls of light and understanding in your consciousness. Ooh. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Much love to everyone and um I will I will see you in a couple weeks. Perfect. Jim won't be with us next week, so you have to check back on the Hukalo website and also in the Hukalo groups on Facebook. Um if you would like to be part of any of those groups, you can go to um the hukalo.org and sign up. Also, um if you would like to be a paid member of Hukalo to guarantee that you have your questions answered and that you're sitting in the room for $10 a month, you can go to hukalo.org and sign up uh, as a paid member. And Jim will have, uh, Jim and Takur will be teaching Galactic Reiki again as stated at the beginning of the webinar. So check the website for announcements for when that will start. I'm not sure when we can get it going. I was hoping to get it done in March okay. at the end of the month. So right. uh, check with me if you're interested, and I will uh, have Max do an announcement on Yukalo, uh public and private. Okay, perfect. All right. Much love, everyone, and uh, namaste. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, Thank you both. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Is there a way that you can chat real quick? Yes. Yes. Okay. Much love.